Hello, in this problem we have to solve this inequality. So we have x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3, and that's less than or equal to 0. Solution. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. We have four terms, and we somehow have to factor this. So what I'm thinking is um, I don't see a way to factor it by grouping. Usually when you have four terms, um, you can try to like factor something out so you get a common factor, but I'm not seeing that. So instead, um, let's just see if we can find uh, a zero to this. So let's check to see if one is a zero. So let's check one. And why one? One is always just a good one to check because usually, you know, on these problems, one and negative one are good ones. So we have one cubed plus one squared minus five times one plus three. And basically we're just adding the coefficients. You can look and look at it that way too. If you add the coefficients and you get zero, then one is a zero. So this will be two minus five plus three. So this is zero. So one is a zero. One is a zero. And so therefore we know that x minus one is a factor is a factor. And so if we divide by x minus 1, therefore the remainder will be 0. So let's do that. In the next step, we're going to divide by x minus 1. And to do that, we basically flip the sign, put a little bracket here, and we move to synthetic division. We write down the coefficients. 1, 1, negative 5, and 3. And then we draw a line. Let me go through all all of that again from the beginning because there's a lot of information here and if you're not familiar with some of it it might seem like a lot so we're trying to solve this inequality so we're trying to factor it somehow um, factor by grouping is usually a good idea when you have four terms however in this case I don't see something nice that we can pull out that's going to leave us with a common factor so we can try to use the rational roots theorem but instead uh, even before going to that, we can just check 1 right away directly. To check 1, you can just add the coefficients. 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 5 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0, so 1 is a 0. Um, here I showed it by evaluating the function by plugging in 1 and showing it's equal to the same thing as adding the coefficients. Whenever 1 is a 0, x minus 1 is a factor, and that means if you divide by x minus 1, the remainder is 0, and you can use that to factor the rest of this polynomial. So we wrote down the coefficients. Let me just double check them. 1, 1, negative 5, and 3. The first step in synthetic division is to take this number and bring it down. So 1. And then we multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. We add 1 plus 1 is 2. Multiply. 2 times 1 is 2. We add. We get negative 3. Multiply. We get negative 3. We add and we get 0, which means that 1 is a 0, which we already knew. However, now we know that our original polynomial is really x minus 1 times, and then here it's going to be um, 1 less in, in degrees. So this is a 3, so this is going to be a quadratic. So it'll be 1 times x squared, which is x squared, plus 2 times x minus 3. So it's 1 times x squared, 2 times x minus 3. And we want to see when this is less than or equal to zero that was the original question right less than or equal to zero okay let's try to factor it some more i don't know if it will i have not done this problem so let's see here um i think this factors let's try it i'm just going to try to guess so two numbers that multiply to three well one and three uh, or rather negative three so let's make the three positive and the one negative because then 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then 3x plus a negative x, the inner and the outer, give you the middle term, always. 3x plus negative x is 2x. And we want this to be less than or equal to 0. Look at this. Um, we have x minus 1 twice. This is really x minus 1 squared, x plus 3, less than or equal to 0. So x minus 1 squared is never going to be negative, okay? It's never going to be negative because it's being squared. But it might be 0, and that's going to happen when x is equal to 1.
And that's one of our answers in this problem because when x is equal to one, we get one minus one, which is zero. Zero squared is zero. Zero times anything is zero. And zero is equal to zero. So it satisfies the inequality less than or equal to zero. So this is always, so if, if x is not one, okay, then this is always positive. So the only thing that's going to make this, this, this expression negative is this. So when is x plus three going to be less than or equal to zero? Well, when x is less than or equal to negative three. So from here, uh, we can get the answer, right? So um, we would get in this case, Uh, let's see, negative infinity to negative three, bracket, union, and a one. And that would be the final answer. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.